contact. So we, you know, we, you can't actually co-parent effectively with someone who is abusive uh, and who is unhealthy relationally. So you try to parent separately, kind of parallel parent versus co-parent and, and minimize that contact. A lot of the time we justify that, oh, you know, we, I can't because I'm so close to his sister and oh, his mom needs me. It's just often a way in which we maintain a link to the person that provides us with a certain chemical cocktail within us that unconsciously we're addicted to. Wow. That is so scary and sad. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I'm, I follow this guy, Lee Hammock. He's a self-aware narcissist, he says. Mm. And do you think that narcissists can be self-aware and recover? I don't know if they can fully recover. I think, you know, I think Lee is a good example of what can happen if someone really puts in a lot of work in. Mm. I, I don't know there are, if there are many of those out there. Because the problem we have with people who fall in that category, um, they don't think there's anything wrong. They think mm -hmm. that's okay. And they justify every single action. They justify every single behavior. There's a, always a reason for it. And they're so smart in the way they act and with the people they, they choose to connect with. It's, it's hard to spot and they don't think there's anything wrong. So they don't put enough effort in. They do, they're they not motivated to change because it's hard work. I mean, I'm sure you've know, having done some of your own healing, I definitely know that it was hard work, backbreaking work and, and really, you know, the, looking in the mirror is the worst part. And that's not something that they're willing to do. They're not willing to take ownership. Hey, do you know what? I hurt the person who cares about me. I hurt the person who I said I care about. I actually manipulated. I did some things on purpose. I did some things that were still serving and actually heard them. They they very rarely go there. Wow. Well, I will tell you what, this is another story for another day. But this past year in 2023, I dealt with two of these tapes. Oh wow. Two of them. Girl, I'm strong. Um, <laughs> but, but that's another story oh for another role. day. <laughs> For another day, we're not going to go down the narcissist spiral today because mm. that's another whole episode. Yeah. But yeah since yeah, we're yeah. talking about breakups, right? Um, how do you? I saw a post you made a while back. So I want to ask, how do you um, break up in a healthy way? Where and how can you recover from the breakup, or should I say, consciously break up, so that you can heal? and move on, I guess, more healthfully. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Um, so this is assuming, you know, breaking in a healthy way, assumes that both partners are relatively healthy. Mm -hmm. Because very often if the relationship isn't super healthy, there's someone storming out or someone mm -hmm. just dumping someone seemingly out of the blue or after a lot of conflict. And we would break up healthily by recognizing that, you know what, we're we're having too many conflicts that we can't resolve. I'm not meeting your needs. You're not meeting my needs. We don't seem to be able to overcome this. Neither of us is willing to put the effort in anymore, or maybe mm, the effort we put in doesn't bring a return on investment. Maybe we should consider separating. How are we going to go? If you know, If we live together, how are we going to arrange it? What are we doing with the property, the, the children, the things we share um, and separating in a way that both people will hurt, but there is a closure because we know why we have a conversation. We agree that it's not working. We do. We agree that we're most likely going to miss each other because we had a shared life for a while and it is for the best of the both of us. A lot of times I don't think people know what a healthy breakup looks like. So I'm really glad that you explained that. And since most people don't have that type of experience, how do you process and heal from, let's say, an unexpected breakup? It, it takes time to allow yourself to grieve. 
every breakup is a loss. And even if the relationship wasn't healthy and on some level you knew that, and you know, no relationship ends out of the blue. It's not breakups don't happen because everything was great. We were both so happy, so connected and everything was great. And then suddenly he leaves. That it doesn't happen like this. Like the breakup happened because there was a fault in the system. The relationship was broken. We just didn't deal with it. We didn't repair it. We presented it wasn't there. We brushed it under the rug and then eventually we tripped over it. It's never that it comes out of the blue. So it's reflecting on that. That's going to help us eventually recover from it. But it's really, really important to allow ourselves to grieve because we can't move over something that we don't allow ourselves to feel. And breakups hurt, even when you know it's for the best. Even when I knew my divorce was for the best and the relationship with, the abusive relationship was for the best, it hurt. And the time to allow ourselves to feel the pain, the the loss of the dream, because we hoped, it's not just the person in the breakup, it's what we hope will happen in the next five, 10 years. The, it, it, it's the dreams for the future that we're grieving. There, there's a lot to process and allowing yourself to process. With that, this is no novelty with me. It is no contact. We, we, we can't be getting over someone while still chatting or relying on them for emotional um, reassurance. We can't be, you know, breaking up and crying to them that, oh, I miss you. It's, it's almost impossible. I love that you said that. Uh, I once had a guy tell me, because uh, he broke up with me, right? And he said, literally, I want to help you get through this. So I'm not going to ghost you or avoid you, you know, reach out to me anytime I want to be friends and I help support you through this breakup. And I thought, this is the craziest thing mm. I've ever heard in my life. Like, so you're going to inflict the pain and then also be the remedy. That sounds weird to me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree with that. So, and I, I also agree with what you said. I think a lot of it, and in definitely in my own experiences, it's, um, I, I hear this term future faking a lot these days. And I think just what that means is like, this person maybe made promises to you, or you both envisioned a life together. And um, now when you're going through the breakup, like you said, that dream, that vision of that shared future is no more. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much grief that can cause. It's like, I, w I once read when I was going through my first divorce when I was young, um, that a divorce was like a death and you had to mm -hmm. mourn it as if it was like a death, but it's almost worse because the person is yeah. still alive. Yeah. You know? And so when you Absolutely. go no contact, it's really brutal because you're used to talking to that person. You're used to getting texts from them. You're used to, you know, engaging with them on social media and making plans with them. And all of that comes to a halt. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to go through your process. So is there a process that um, like steps that we can take to move through to heal from a breakup? Yeah, I like to coach my clients through a bit of a grieving process where I am, I insist on them allowing themselves to, you know, to cry, to feel the feelings, um, to give themselves a break from actual processing, just to go into the depth of, of that pain of the grief, because I agree with you, it feels like a death. And in some ways it can be worse because the person is still there, but not available to us. What we had is not available to us. Um, I think reflection um, on what happened in that relationship is really important. And that takes time. We can't just go break up and start reflecting on, okay, what did they do wrong? What did I do wrong? What went well? What I didn't. Um, but that is key. I also am fan of rituals. Something I like to do is recommend writing a closure letter because you're never going to get a closure from your ex. Like we can forget about that. We, we get the closure from our own inner processing and we give it to ourselves. So whatever floats your boat, I recommend writing a letter by hand. Dear ex, thank you for the time we had. I am heartbroken that it ended. 
this is what went well, this is what I'm grateful for, this is what I learned. You hurt me, this is what you did wrong, you disappointed me when, this is the part I played, I take ownership of this and end it the way you want. I prefer to end it, end it, end it wishing them well and then whatever is a part of your personal ritual, mine is fire, I, I burn the things that I let go, but you can you know, let it go in the wind and throw it in the water. Some people like to flush it in the toilet. Um, some people like to flush it before they go to the toilet. To, like, <laughs> <add> it. <laughs> so it really is whatever gives you that personal release and then relief and, uh, and closure. But I really like that. And, you know, the processing doesn't end there. The insights we gain from that relationship will directly impact the next one. 